Okay, so starting off, I'd like to answer this question here. Ultimately, by the end of this unit, we want to be able to factor all types of polynomials. Okay? Because in this, up to this point, um, if we have a polynomial that has four or more terms and you can't factor by grouping, then you guys wouldn't be able to factor. We're going to learn some methods during the 3 4 guide in order to help us factor. And ultimately, what we're going to want to be able to do is to solve um, equations. Okay? <clears throat> What's the difference between solving the equation or factoring an expression? What's the difference? Ah. Solve like a answer. Right, so you're like x is equal to something, right? What do you do with factor? Yeah? That's yeah, it's simple. I just use two brackets, right? I'm getting people on tests. I'm asked on a test. I'm asking to factor, and then people are solving. If you do that, right? Even though you need to factor to, to uh, solve, and you go ahead and solve, you're going to lose marks. It's telling me that you don't know what I was talking about in the first place. Okay. So solve means find your answers for x. Factor means write it as a product of its factor. Okay. So understand the difference and answer the question that's being asked. So in this question right here, I'm asked to solve this equation, which means I want to find the answers for x that make this equal to zero. The only way we can do this is by factoring, and I chose this one as a review of our um, sum of cubes factoring, which uh, amazed me that some people left that blank on the test, because I guarantee you it's going to be on there, right? Um, so to, to factor the sum of cubes, um, take this cube root of the first term, cube root of the second term. Once you get that bracket, you don't even have to look at the question anymore. Square the first term you have, which is 4x squared. Multiply the two terms and change the sign. Remember that this sign and this sign are always different. And square the last term. That's an equation, so make sure you write equals to zero. So what I would do now is factor that quadratic. Okay, so if I factor that quadratic, which is this guy here, into its two factors, then I can set each one of those factors equal to zero. But if you remember during the lesson, I told you that this quadratic is never going to factor. Okay? So if it doesn't factor, then I'm left with solving the first term, 2x plus 1. When is that equal to zero? And the second term, which is my quadratic, which is equal to zero. This one's easy to solve. Just do some math and I get x is equal to negative one half, which is my first answer. And I need to get my other answers from this. It doesn't factor. What do you do when a quadratic doesn't factor and you want to solve for x? Sure. Quadratic formula. So again, this is just it's from a grade 11. I expect you to know this. Right? So the quadratic, I'll write it down for you. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and refer um, to your quadratic for your a, your b, and your c values. Okay, so now it's just a matter of substituting in and simplifying okay, in the simplest radical form. So that means I don't want any decimal answers, I want a simplified radical. So substituting in, and I'll just do um, full substitution for the benefit of the note. So I get negative bracket, negative 2 is my b value plus or minus negative 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is 1, and the whole thing is over 2 times 4. <clears throat> Doing some math, I get 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 16, all over 8. <clears throat> 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 over 8. So now I want to simplify the square root of negative 12. So in order to uh, simplify the square root of negative 12, you have to recall from grade 11 that you can't take the square root of a negative number, so you need to use, or remember that i, by definition, is equal to the square root of negative 1. 
Okay. So that's from grade 11 when you first learned about imaginary numbers. So to break negative 12 up, I'm looking for the biggest perfect square that goes into 12, which is 4. So I can break this up into 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 3. Because 4 times negative 1 times 3 gives me negative 12. And that whole thing is over 8. Now simplifying, I get 2 plus or minus 2i root 3 over 8. And again, I'm showing every single step here. You wouldn't be required to do that on a test. Okay. Um, and then I look at my terms. I have 2. I have plus or minus 2i root 3. And I have 8. I notice that all of them are divisible by 2. So if I divide everything by 2, that's left with 1. That's left with 1. That's left with 4. I get 1 plus or minus i root 3 over 4. So I chose this uh, example specifically, one, to remind us how to factor some of cubes, um, two, the quadratic formula, three, um, the complex number i is equal to the square root of negative one, and then again, how to simplify math. Any questions on that? If I was to graph this, this on a piece of graph paper, uh, how many times would it cross the x-axis? Basically, if I was to graph this. Because what I was solving in this question, I was solving when this is equal to zero. What two places do I cross? Okay, so. Um, it's used in, in when you're saying plus or minus, that's really the two answers here, right? So um, you're saying these two and this one, so that'd be three. Okay. Can I graph an imaginary number? No. no. Okay, unless you go on to university and take complex analysis or work with imaginary numbers, okay? Um, you're not going to graph uh, imaginary numbers. So this guy here is just an imaginary answer. This is the only place it would pop across the x axis. All right, you understand the difference? So if I ask you to solve for the x-intercepts of this, that's really a different question than solving for the zeros. Because okay? the x-intercepts, this is really my only my x-intercept. That's the answer to that question. Solve this, this guy here, and these imaginary answers are the answers to my solving for zeros. Does that make sense? OK. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So like, I don't know exactly how this thing would look, but it might be something like, um, it'll come down touch once. I think, hold on, this is a quadratic, and then do something like that. Okay, I mean, so you're only getting that zero there, and then put one half, and you get one zero. Okay, I'm not sure if that's how that goes. Okay, any questions? Matt, any questions? Okay, okay. <clears throat> very important skill is dividing polynomial functions. So in order to um, divide polynomials, we need to review for some of you. Some of you, I think in elementary school, you don't even do long division anymore, do you? You just do long division? My first class, did, some of them did, and some of them didn't. Okay. So long division is when you're taking uh, the long method of taking a number and dividing it by another number. So if I wanted to take 40 and divide it by 70, the way that you do long division is you write 40, your long division, doesn't look like a radical, that was just a mistake there, 17. So we're going to use this process um, in our next example with using a polynomial function. So we're going to uh, remember how to do this using numbers, and then we're going to do it using polynomials. So first thing you do is say 17. 17 doesn't go into 4. You can put a 0 there, but you don't need to. Okay. 17 goes into 40 two times. So you put your 2 up there. And then you want to figure out how many times it goes into it. So 2 times 17 is 34. 
subtract. I'm going to put my subtraction in a little circle so I know that I'm subtracting, and I get 6. Since there's no other number to bring down, then I'm left with 6, and 6 is known as my remainder. The answer I got is the quotient. What I was dividing into is called my dividend. And what I was dividing by is called my divisor. So each one of these things um, are used in a statement of equality in the division statement. So the division statement, which you're going to be required stating at the end of your long division is the dividend is equal to the divisor multiplied by the quotient and then add on your remainder. So I'm just going to show that it works with these numbers. So the dividend was 40, and that's equal to my divisor, which was 17, multiplied by my quotient, which was 2, and then add on my remainder. 17 times 2 is 34, add 6 is 40. So it's just a statement between these values here. Okay, so now we're going to do the exact same process, but we're going to do it with um, all of them. Example. Again, my pen is not writing what it's supposed to, so let me just orient the forward one more time. Example, divide, then state the division statement. So the first one, we're going to take the polynomial 2x squared minus 3x minus 1. And we're going to divide it by the binomial x plus 2. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to set it up in the exact same way we did with the numbers. So you take your divisor, write your long division symbol, your dividend. I'm going to use the exact same process. So again, a binomial, so one, two terms, can't go into a monomial. Okay, so you can put zero there, don't put anything there. And I want to figure out how many times it goes into this binomial, this one right here. So really all you have to do is take something here, multiply it by this to get exactly the first term. You don't care what the other term is. So what times x would give me 2x? 2x. So my 2x goes above here. So <clears throat> now I'm going to multiply this, okay? Just like I did with the 2 and the 17. 2x times x is 2x squared, and that's what you want to do. You want to match that first term so that when you subtract, they cancel out and go away. 2x times 2 is 4x. So now you're going to do the subtraction, just like we did here. Okay, but you're subtracting each term. So 2x squared minus 2x squared is 0. And negative 3x subtract 4x is negative 7x. Again, a binomial can't go into a monomial, but now I have an extra term to bring down. So 
So now I have a binomial. So what is the next term in my divisor choice? Excuse me, in my quotient. So what times x would give me negative 7? Yep. Negative 7. Right, negative 7. Negative 7 times x is negative 7 x. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. Remember that I'm subtracting. And I put it in circles so I remember that I'm subtracting both terms. Negative 7x subtract negative 7x is 0x. Negative 1 subtract 14 is 13. There's nothing, no other terms in my dividend to bring down. So now that I'm done, my 13 is my remainder. 2x minus 7 is my quotient. So when I write down my division statement, my division statement is the dividend is equal to the divisor multiplied by the portion add on the remainder. And just like with the numbers here, if you multiply up those two brackets and collect the like terms, uh, at the bottom you'll end up with your original expression. Any questions? Okay. So let's try it with uh, Okay, so in this example, I'm going to throw in a couple um, things that you need to know for when you're doing uh, division. Okay. So when you're doing division, you always, always have to write your dividend and your divisor in standard form. So this one's not in standard form, so I'm going to write it in standard form. And also, um, you need all terms represented. Okay, so this has an x cubed. It has an x squared, but it doesn't have an x term, and I need there to be one. So I'm just going to put in a placeholder of 0x. Okay, so I need something to hold that that x term, but I don't want any to be there. That's why I put the 0 in front of it. Same with this. If this happened to be 2x squared plus 3, then when I'm dividing it, I'd have to write in 2x squared plus 0x plus 3. All terms have to be represented in the quotient, excuse me, in the dividend and the divisor. Okay, so try that. See if you can, right now, try that. See if you can get your answer. Then I'll pick it up in a couple of seconds. So when you're doing it, again, remember you're dividing by a binomial, so 1, 2, start off in the second term. You want to put something up here, that when you multiply it by that, you get exactly that, what's going to be in this case. Right? 3x squared. 3x squared times 2x is 6x cubed. Bless you. 3x squared times 3 is 9x squared. Subtract, that, subtract that is 0, that's what you want to happen. 13x squared, subtract 9x squared is 4x squared. You need to bring down your 0 placeholder for your x, so that you have a binomial again. Then you put something up here, times 2x is going to equal 4x squared. That's going to be 2x. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 3 is 6x. 
subtract. The first terms cancel out. That's what we want to happen. Zero minus six is six. There's still one more term to bring down, which is the negative nine. Then something times two x would give me negative six x. That would be negative three. Negative three times two x is negative six x. Negative three times three is negative nine. And I subtract and I get a zero remainder. So if I get a zero remainder, that tells me that that binomial goes into our polynomial evenly. And what do we call numbers that go into other numbers evenly? Here, a factor, okay? So this is a factor of this polynomial. And that's ultimately how we're gonna be um, factoring this type of expression, okay? So tomorrow, we're gonna be given this, not the dividing by, we're just gonna be given this and it's gonna say factor, okay? You can't factor it by grouping, there's no common um, factor, so the only way you're gonna be able to factor it is by choosing a binomial that uh, divides into this even. So you're gonna have to do this long division to figure out um, that you get a zero remainder, okay? The binomial will not be given to you, you have to guess it. So what makes life a lot easier is learning in a second way of dividing polynomials, and it's called synthetic division. This is an alternate way of dividing polynomials. You do not have to know this at all. Okay? This is just an easier method. If you like it, use it. If you don't, you can always use this. Nowhere on a test will it ever say divide by synthetic division. Okay? You can always use long division. Synthetic division is easier, but it does have some drawbacks, and I'll talk about that in a second. So synthetic division is used when you divide a polynomial. So I'm going to call that P of X by a binomial. And I'm going to call that binomial X minus A. And so um, you can only use synthetic division when you're dividing by a binomial, and it has to be in the form of x minus the number. Okay? So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to do um, the first one, this guy here, by synthetic division. So remember, it's a different process for getting the exact same answer. Okay? So we'll call this one A by synthetic division. Synthetic division, you only work with the coefficients, okay? But it has to be in standard form, just like with long division. So I'm going to write down 2x uh, squared minus 3x minus 1. But instead of writing down the x's, I just leave them out. So you're only working with the numbers. The synthetic division, division, symbol, is like that. And you leave just one space. You're just going to put one number underneath these numbers. Now I have to identify the A value. I'm going to go back over here. So um, I always have to figure out what the A value is, and there always has to be X minus the A value. So if I go back to here, X minus, what would the A value have to be in order for me to get positive 2? Negative 2. Because two negatives make a positive, so that's my value right there. Does that make sense? Once you identify the A value, you write that out in front. So this may seem complicated, like what's he talking about now? Trust me, it would make life a lot easier uh, in the future if you learn synthetic division. Okay, first thing you're going to do is bring down your 2 and write it down there. So if you're writing this down, you might just want to look at me and then write it down in a second because if you look up, you'll be like, what happened? Okay. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Add these two guys, negative 7. Negative 2 times negative 7 is positive 13. Add these, excuse me, positive 14. Add these two guys and you get 13. Okay. So it's, it's a different method than long division. So you're taking this, multiplying it by this, putting the answer, adding these two guys. This multiplied by this, putting the answer, adding these two guys. So how does this look like this?
Where do I get my answer from here? Yeah? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, that's always into how it's going to be. The last number is going to be your remainder. Then this term is going to be your quotient, and it's going to start in order. It'll be the constant term. Then it'll be the x term. And if there's more than, than 2, then it'll be the x squared, the x cubed, they go in order. Okay, and I'll do an example of a, a longer one in a second. So from here, okay, what I'd want you to be able to do is to write down the division statement. So this represented that. The negative 2 represented x plus 2. This right here, so that's my remainder, that's my constant term, that's my x term. So you get the exact same division statement, um, which is a lot less work. Especially when you divide out much, much longer ones. So something like this. Example four, excuse me, x to the power of four minus six x cubed minus two x minus four, and I want to divide that by x minus two. So again, on a test, you see this question. It's just going to say divide and write the division statement. If you want to do long division, do it. If you want to do synthetic division, do it. Synthetic division. I work with the coefficients in descending order, and all terms have to be represented, just like in long division. So my first coefficient is 1, negative 6, negative 2. Again, that x term is missing, but I have to put it in, which is 0, and then minus 4. 99% of the time, if somebody gets this question wrong, it's because they forget to put the 0 out. Okay. Draw your synthetic division. Identify the a value. What's the A value going to be in this case? That, 2. Okay. So remember, it's x minus the A value, so it's 2. It's always the opposite if you think about it. So if this is x minus, then that's going to be the positive. If this was x plus, that would be the negative. Okay. Any questions on that? So then this should be very quick to do. right? Move your 1 down. 2 times 1 is 2. Add negative 4. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, add negative 10. 2 times negative 10 is negative 20, add, get negative 20. 2 times negative 20 is negative 40, add, and you get negative 44. Much quicker way of doing division. So my division statement is my dividend. is equal to my divisor. So remember that that 2 represented that binomial x minus 2. So this represents my quotient and my remainder. That's my remainder. This is my constant term. This is my x term. This is my x squared term. This is my x cubed term. This goes in order. Okay. So that would be my division statement. Any questions on that? Okay, so I said that um, synthetic division does have a drawback because you can only divide by a binomial. That's always the case. And um, the number in front of the x always has to be a 1. But we can um, adjust that. We just have to account for it. So I'm going to do this question by synthetic division. Okay? This question is different because it has a 2 in front of this x. Right? And I can only have a 1 in front of the x. So I'll write down my um, dividend, which is 6, 13, 0, and negative 9. So I'm just going to work down here. Remember that when I divide by a binomial, I want to have it in the form of x minus that number. Okay? This guy here is 2x plus 3. I don't want that 2 in front of the x. How can I get rid of it? Okay, if I divide the 3 by 2, then um, I'd have to divide all terms, and I'd have to have an equal sign. Okay? So you can't divide expressions unless it's an equation. 
So how do I get rid of the tube to the expression? Yep. Exactly. Okay. So you would factor it out. So factoring is used for um, getting rid of numbers you don't want when you have an expression. Dividing is used for getting rid of numbers you don't want uh, when you have an equal sign. So 2 times x is 2x. 2 times what would be 3? Yeah. Right. Okay, so now I have it in a form inside of the bracket of x um, minus my a value. What would my a value be? Close. Why isn't he right? He said three halves. Negative. Remember, it's always the opposite, right? right. But the, once you do that, the process is done the exact same way, except for one thing, and we'll talk about that in a second. Bring the six down. Multiply three halves by six. Three times uh, six is eighteen. Divide by two is nine. Since it was negative, be negative nine. Add, we get 4, negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, divided by 2 is negative 6. Add, we get negative 6. Negative 3 times 6 is positive 18, divided by 2 is 9. Add, and you get 0. So when I did it long division, I got 0 as a remainder, which is great. But remember, this represents my um, quotient. And here was my quotient when I did long division. How are these numbers related to these numbers? Okay. Those ones are twice as much as those ones. Why do you think that happened? Yeah. Exactly, because we factored out the two. Whatever number you factor out by, you have to divide everything by that number to get the real quotient. So that's the only difference when you're um, using synthetic division when you have a number in front of your x. You just have to remember, factor that number out, and then with your quotient, remember to divide it by that. Okay? This happened to be zero, right? But if this was a number, you never divide your remainder. Okay? Only your, your um, quotient gets divided by. So then when you have all that, please, and I have people write this all the time and they get marks off because they don't write it in proper form. Remember that this negative 3 over 2 represents the binomial 2x plus 3. Do not write x plus 3 over 2. Okay? Write it in proper form. So don't write it like that. And then here's my quotient with no remainder. So you can see that, uh, hopefully you can see that, um, if this was the question right here and I said factor this, right, and you have to guess a binomial, it's a lot easier to do this and see if you get a zero remainder. It's much quicker than going through this whole long division to see if you get a zero remainder. Go back. Yes, thank you. Okay. I don't like synthetic division, don't use it. Okay, but I guarantee you it's going to save it. Any questions? Okay, so I'm going to save this, and then while I'm saving this, um, 